I became interested in collecting vintage cars when I was a kid, the songs of the time. I was born in 45, so I was hearing songs in the 50s. And, and I got a hot rod Ford at a $2 bill, remember Hank Sr.? And then there was the, the hot rod Lincoln, and it went on, and back then there, everybody had a rod. And so I was infected before I was even a teenager. Didn't have any money, but that comes later. And so you collect cars and then vintage cars, and uh, once it's in your system, there's no turning back. This passion consumed my whole high school life. It was college life. And then after what I had to go to work, and, and it had abated a little bit, but early on I bought a 55 Jag convertible that I couldn't afford. And uh, that was when I moved here, about 71. And I uh, had to pinch pennies for gas money for it, but uh, it's always continued. But then in the, in the mid 90s is when I kicked it into gear. I had the time and then, you know, you have to learn and, and get uh, introduced to the business a few times the hard way. And finally you, you learn how to collect cars. A big acquisition would be the car here on my, on my right, uh, the Marmon, 16 cylinder, it's a 1931 four door sedan convertible. And that, that was major, and it, it was a hell of a find because it only had about 18,000 miles on it when it was completely redone. It restored, I won't say, because they knocked the mud off it and painted it, cleaned it up. And what you're seeing is a, is a great example of 1931 high technology. They made extensive use of aluminum, which was unheard of back then. And so this, this, uh, this car has a lot of aluminum in it, but the block is aluminum, which weighed substantially less than any of its peer group. And um, it made a whopping, about 490 cubic inches, made a whopping 200 horsepower. A Cadillac came the year before with a V16, but it's a smaller motor, makes about 175, and didn't have the aluminum. So it made this car so fast for the era, it would outrun anything up to 100 made in the, in the classic era. I think I have about 30 cars. And proud of is, I mean, I've made my mark in Marmons because they were made here in town. I love the technology, I love speed. And they were the thing in their day. Hell, they, they, they won the first Indy 500 in 1911. And then with uh, Howard Marmon and, and a great engineering ability, that's 16. I say proud, I'm so happy to share this knowledge of, of an unsung until fairly recently an unsung sung mark. Now it's coming into its own, of course, but they're all lovely cars and, they, and for what they do, they do, they do it so well. I think the Mark of the Marmons is probably my favorite. I think it's important to preserve these cars, of course, for posterity, because the, the kids today with the educational system, they're losing history completely. And this car was built in 31, isn't that about 85 years ago? It'll soon be 100, 100 a century old car that will easily keep up with the speed limits today. That has to be preserved. And the, these are glamour cars, the, only the very wealthy could afford them. So it's, it's always fun to watch those people that, that glow in the dark and they're bigger than life and what they did in that era. It's, it's magnificent. And the people today should be able to to look at it, and I don't mind if they touch. This is a petting zoo as far as I'm concerned. Get in it, have some fun, start it up. It's okay, because that's what it was made for. That, to see those people, I had no idea. To see them, they're astonished, and that's great for me. What juices me the most about doing this is getting in something that would have such a story to tell, but getting it out on the highway and making it go at least as fast as it was designed to go in the day and maybe a little bit faster because I have a need for speed and it's never abated and I just love it. So this car a number of times has been over 100 miles an hour on Interstate 65. <laughs> well Indianapolis, its contribution to automotive history, it was an epicenter and the state, I mean Lord you had studs here. What a mark, Marmon. You had coal, and it could go on and on. Google it. I mean, we, we won't take up your time for that, but it in the state, my goodness, up in Auburn, the great Duesenberg, the Cord, the Auburn. I mean, and, and I, 
I think at one time at the turn of the century, a little later, there were in three digits number of automobile manufacturers. And I would leave, leave the conjecture up to other people how Detroit stole it. I mean, a number of them went bankrupt in 34 because they were luxury cars. But, but Indianapolis just spawned many, many ideas, inventions, uh, technology for the time. It was, it, was, it was the place of cars. Plus they had the Indy 500, and so they could try them out here, and it, 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 uh, it really gelled for a period of time. Maybe the question is, if it hadn't been for the Great Depression, where would we be?